Welcome back. Now, of course, the Kenya National Audit Office stands as the main body that uh, looks at um, auditing government accounts and, of course, the accounts of statutory bodies, state corporations, courts, and even commissions. Today we want to find out what really happens and, of course, how far we've gone in terms of the auditing process. And here on the Power Breakfast Show, we are honored to have uh, Edward Ooko, who is the Auditor General. Of course, uh, he was former Auditor General of the African Development Bank, and he's a member of the Institute of Chartered uh, Accountants in England and Wales, and of course, of the Institute of Certified Public Accounts of Kenya. Many thanks. Welcome, Welcome. to the Power Breakfast Show. Good oh, morning. Oh, oh, very well. Good, good morning. morning. I was telling Mark, <laughs> this is the first time. <laughs> this is the first time. And general is being interviewed. Uh -huh. Right, right, we, we, right. We, we never, they they mm -hmm. normally didn't do it. Mm -hmm. This is the first time. Absolutely. The president. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. You, you've been in office for about one and a half years. You still have about six, six and, and a half, half years. Yes. Six and a half yes. years. How has it been so far? Oh, it's been good. It's been interesting. Because, as you know, uh, Johnson, I came from outside, outside the public sector. So one of the things is trying to integrate, get a team together, and continue. And remember, you are trying to get on a ship which has been there for 50 years, <laughs> and you have <laughs> some staff who have been there for 30 years. Mm -hmm. is that? But it is a public body. You are coming from the private sector. You have to steady the ship, get the acceptance, change it and move on. We've done that. Mm. But, but, but of course we would say uh, they got the right person for the right job because this is something that over 25 years of experience in the world of auditing. Yes, I think it's, things were very interesting. I mean, Kenya is, is, is moving forward. Uh, and I think that the new constitution is some, some of the most progressive, one of the most progressive constitution we can have in the world. And Within the constitution, this office was one of the offices which had to be in place by 27th August 2011. And so it, it was transparently advertised. It was tra I had the interviews, the usual interviews in, in, in the, through the media, with the technical interview, and of course, finally, the vetting in parliament. So it was transparent, and that was an admirable thing. Having come from the private sector in the African Development Bank and going to uh, the offices of the Auditor General, and you have, as you have said, you have, there are people who have been there for years. What was the most shocking or surprising thing that you found there? You know, the most shocking thing, really there was no most shocking thing. The, the, the thing was mainly some of the rumors we've heard about, you know, the issues of auditors being compromised and the the challenges of uh, all accounts not being up to date, you know, auditing has not been up to date facing the, like the local authorities, you know, we have about 175 local authorities which we had to bring up to date. So this was uh, something of a surprise for me from the private sector. Here, where our resources are, you know, most of our resources are tied in these urban councils and towns. And we are not up to date with the auditing. In Kenya, knowing how well we are uh, endowed with the human resources in this area, so that was uh, one of the shocking things. One of the reasons why we audit is to uh, keep the books of accounts up updated and also eliminate corruption. And we know Kenya is one of the most corrupt countries <laughs> in the world, in the local authorities in central government, in public corporation. Mm -hmm. Do you feel frustrated? Do you, do, you, do you feel that you are doing anything? Y you know, me, i not frustrated, but uh, coming from outside, knowing with this, you know, perception of Kenya, I really felt that we should do work differently. This office should do work differently. That will contribute to uh, the fight against all this uh, corruption and so forth. So one, one of the things was t is to change this office, and this is a continuous fight, to be an office which is proactive, an office which is doing work which is preventive and deterring in the contribution towards the fight against corruption. And I believe that's the way to go. I believe we need to strengthen the institutions, get people to believe in our institutions, 
and try and make sure that institutions like the Auditor General work and do work which is going towards preventing rather than waiting after the fact uh, to be detected. Mm -hmm. So this is where we are going. So all our strategies which we are doing is, is geared towards changing this office from sort of uh, the pathologist office to an office which is relevant today. So uh, how do you do that? Because audit, you, you audit things that have done. Accountants mm -hmm. will have done mm -hmm. the thing, managers will have done whatever they want to do. Uh, Yours is to look for it, uh, look uh, after. So how can it be not pathological? No, it cannot be to look after. As you know, let me first of all retract. This office, under the new dispensation, yes. is the office which is meant to give assurance to Wanjiko yes. about her resources yes. that have been used properly. And therefore, it is not only a matter of accounts. It is a matter which, to give this assurance, requires that we must assure that the resources are not only budgeted, under recorded, under accounted, seemingly accounted for, but also that throughout the year there has been managerial accountability. But more important is what difference has these resources made to Wanjiko, the delivery of resources. So the it is not auditing; it is giving assurance, a global assurance. So the accounting and auditing of the account is just one pillar of the of the new dispensation, of the new mandate of this office. So what are the others? The others will be, apart from auditing the accounts, the constitution requires in 2294 that I will give assurance that the resources have been used lawfully and effectively. Lawfully and effectively. effectively. That's very important. Lawfully means it's not been it's misused, it has been safeguarded. Uh, uh, there's, there's been no corrupt practices, all right? And effectively means that it has made an impact on Wanjiku's rights. Under Chapter 4, you know, Wanjiku has got social rights. In other words, the resources are budgeted, recorded, managed, and used for the benefit of Wanjiku to the extent Possible. Which means what? That in the middle of, of the financial year or in the quarterly, do you get quarterly or half yearly or whatever uh, the information about how money is being spent? Because the way it has been is that the audit and in fact, sometimes in, uh, they, they were delayed for two years. They exactly. had not looked at the books. In yes. fact, I remember <coughs> some schools. I, I used to be a member of a school school board. Right. The books were not uh, even audited or counted for, for, for the last four years. Now, in your case, are you telling me that now, if you are looking at the institutions, they bring to you quarterly or have a uh, document for you to look at? This is where we are going. This is where we are going. We are going to not waiting until the end of the year and then saying, give me a count. We need to do work, continuous work, which is timely, which is more real time, making sure and going in and say, look, has this year's quarterly accounts been mm -hmm. prepared? Have you made sure that the bank reconciliation, things which should be done continuously through managerial accountability has been done? So this is where we are going. So that means the Auditor General is not an auditor which will come only at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. It's an auditor which will Continu be there continuous. Mm -hmm. And not only continuous because of auditing, making recommendations e during the year for corrective measures to be undertaken such that one of the uh, things we hope in doing this is that the accounts will be coming more timely. Because if you are there, you, you are also helping management and advising them and telling them that please make sure you do this before I mm. come or make sure this is, these things are done before I come. So this is a change. You know, this is a change from mm. an auditor general which who will wait mm. and then be presented to one who is relevant, mm. to one who is proactive, okay. and one who does work, which is going to be deterring, which is going to be preventive, because through presence you are going to deter. Mm. How, 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 okay, I mean <coughs> the last one. How do you use the press to help you to do this? One of the ways that I know we used to use, apart from waiting for the bulk uh, Auditor General report <laughs> at the end of the year, which has been 
the bond in parliament. There are things called audit queries. Mm -hmm. You write letters to the minister and say, hey, I see that is not proper, or I see there is a problem here. Right. Do you pass that to the press so that it is identified as public knowledge that something is getting wrong? Mm. I, I think we, we one, thing, I, one thing which I believe uh, has been an omission in this office is communicating. Exactly. Communicating to the very stakeholder to which this office is supposed to be safeguarding, to so-called Wanjiko and you and yes. us. Exactly. This has to change. This has to change. We need to make sure that these reports reach and are known by, by, the public. by the public. And what will happen is that we need, and hence my coming here, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to start this process of communicating. Because Wanjiko has to know. You see, the problem is that the ordinary person there doesn't know that there's an office which is meant to independently work on his or her behalf. Do you understand? Yeah. And, and having done that, it has surely the person must communicate back to that person. That has been an omission. So we really look forward that in communicating, and in we have to work with the media. I think the dispensation in, in our constitution is one of transparency, okay. yeah, one of openness. And this office must be one which is transparent and openness. And luckily, the constitution gives us the right to publish and publicize. That means you should be able to come and ask me, I want this mm. report. I want to know what you are doing. I have a problem. There is something even tell me. In fact, actually, uh, you can actually ask for an audit as a person. But of course, it will be taking the context which is uh, more programmed. Mm. Of course, <laughs> earlier this year, you raised queries on the accounts published by the Kenya Revenue Authority. Right. In fact, this is actually not the first time because last year, you also um, when you did your first review of the KRA books, this is what you said. The authority's ability to carry out its, its mandate in the long run is therefore under threat. Uh, Kindly tell us, mm. how is that situation and what measures have you put in place to perhaps safeguard the future of KRA? Okay, L let me answer this in a more broader context. I think in most, in most cases, people have been, we, our, this way we are changing. Our audit has been mainly looking at expenditure. Our mm -hmm. view has been mainly yeah. on expenditure. Yeah. What yeah. does this mean? But we never ask, has the revenue, revenue which is supposed to be there yeah. been collected yeah. fully? Yeah. So I think there is this shift which we must do. We must try and do deliberate work, programmed work, to ensure that all the sources which, which are revenue bringing are bringing revenue which are comprehensive. Do you understand? So this is the change. And therefore, when you talk about care, I think care should not just be looked at in that context. Care is a very important institution. It is the one unit which is fighting to make sure that it collects as much as possible. My work should be able to do work, audits, which is going to try and make sure people know, uh, the rep, you know, somebody is going to check so that we hope through that the revenue can go, go up. Now, uh, talking to specific case about this one, it's a case of issues of figure, uh, figures not agreeing together, the one which Treasury is giving, mm. Central Bank, yeah. and CARE. You understand? And this is a, a problem. I mean, can you imagine in this tone and age and with the qualifications we have, we cannot get these records to agree. But, you know, it is not the fault of, of uh, care. Care needs to be also, be we need to put more resources mm -hmm. because if you want to make sure you collect more, you must make sure the controls are going to be there. People are going to be doing work which is uh, helping to bring in more income. So this is where we feel that care is doing a very good job and maybe reinforcement into its controls and also into its resources to collect is, is very important. Yeah, because, I mean, remember 2012, you were actually called upon to shed light on discrepancies yes. uh, on the revenue collected in 2007, 2008, right. because the Treasury and the Kenya Revenue Authority couldn't agree on a particular uh, amount. So what are some of the measures that have been pl put in place so that in future such an occurrence doesn't happen again? You see, this is where we are saying we are going to increasingly work very closely with Kerry 
to do work which will make sure, first of all, the comprehensiveness, but more importantly that once it is received, it goes into central bank and it is for the use by, uh, by the government, by, by the public. So we, we are working care to do work which also is going to try and help care. We are, we are going to uh, work with my brother Jiraini to try and make sure that we complement the whole process of making sure of we try and get compressive income as possible. And that means we must make sure that their records, once it's recorded, we have one figure which is going to central bank, we go to central bank, we look at the accounts, we can reconcile. And then effectively what comes into the uh, exchequer government accounts should be reconciled. I, I mean, this is something we have to do. Mm. We really don't want a Kenya where we are saying we have so many figures of revenue. Don't I mean, don't it's surely, I mean, that, that has to be done. But you know, one thing is that we are working together. We are trying to make sure that these systems, because it's a matter of systems being in place to ensure that money is not left out there, we should be collected in. Once it is collected in that, the recording system is there. And this means that we also have to <laughs> undertake continuous audit. We have to make sure that at the ports we are doing work, although KRA also has got their own internal check, but this not we must complement and make sure that their own internal controls are also working as the commissioner expects. Mm. Just a follow-up question. Yes. Remember, you can actually send in your questions to 2442. That's 2442. We have uh, Nixon Buru Ndugire says, Bwana Ooko, what action do you take when you discover a certain company evades tax, considering a Tuoli's outcry that some don't? Uh, the action, <laughs> what, what it is really, me, I don't audit the oh. private company as such, but where I know there's going to be substantial revenue raising source, or especially KIR has got what you call the big revenue. You see, those ones we will, we'll just make sure that KIR has got controls and continuous, you know, relationship to make sure that their taxes are coming. And of course, when I'm going to look at the revenue raised, I will look at materiality. I'll make sure that these big uh, sources are actually giving us the revenue we. We expect. Do you understand? That is not to say I'm going to go into the company accounts because they have the tax consultants to make sure that uh, they pay. And also we have the the, uh, the care uh, staff who also make sure that those calculations are proper. I just want to make sure that that process works as it should be. In other words, the calculations have been done as expected and the revenue should be not a calculation which is wrong. <laughs> Now, in your work, hmm. you f sometimes find somebody culpable of some mismanagement, corruption, whatever. During the period of you've been there, would you say there's some big fish that have been punished mm -hmm. for whatever you found to be improper? I wh one of the work which we are doing, and this is one thing which is not just auditing, it's also to create a unit which can do what you call forensic accounting. Yes. Because, you know, we don't have to wait for EACC to come after they've been told. But during the work, work which I do, we are now having, s we are forming now special teams which will also be able to undertake, because believe you me, when we look at the accounts, we see indications because we see traces of unsupported expenditure, books which are not reconciling. These are indications of problem. Now, at the first stage, we report this to the very managers. Do you understand? And yeah. this is why managerial accountability comes in. Mm -hmm. Because we report and make recommendations during the year, please lock this hole mm -hmm. before I come. Now, we, we, we do this and we give them the letters, the management letters, for them to correct. Now, it's true, there are some areas where we found that this is really lack of uh, managerial accountability. Somebody was not simply doing their work, or people who are there have not been properly qualified. 
all people are there doing work which is suspicious in the sense that you are an accountant <laughs> and you don't undertake bank reconciliations, why the hell are you not taking the bank reconciliation? It raises the question. Now, we have two avenues. Sometimes when it is immediate, I will go call in a team to further the forensic and report. And they, in this case, when we find, we actually name and we report. Now, but I think in, most cases, in most cases, we try and work in a complementary uh, nature with the ESEC. We send it to ESEC to approfond the investigation because they are there to now a profound, and I must say that quite a number of cases you see also ESCC coming with are from my office, are from audit reports, are from what I've told. So in most cases when I find something like that, I transfer to EAC with a name. I say this one, now run off with. Mm -hmm. And that's how you find a lot of ESCC cases. Uh, my name, does, but we are a, lot a, pri a primary source of the work which ESEC does. Well, you are currently conducting a three-month audit of uh, all the councils to establish, you know, genuine debts that are basically going to be inherited <laughs> by the county governments. How far have you gone with that process? Uh, no, this uh, process, as you know, this, um, uh, the, the counties have just come into being and these people are still grappling with a lot of things. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to start those. But we are now already positioned we have a work program, we are positioned now with the teams which will be in the next 10 or go out to the counties with a primary objective. One, where are all these bank accounts which were there before? Mm -hmm. We want to know where they are. And are they all reported to us? This is the first thing we must establish. Mm -hmm. Because we want to know how many sources of accounts are there because this is the primary source of also you know, the potential accounts which are not been reported and which are used. So that's one case. Then we know that this country was in a state of transition, uh, basically, you know, as from <laughs> November onwards. <Yeah. laughs> so we want to really make sure that we, we look at movements which of this in these accounts which are material, which has happened up to 4th of March. Mm -hmm. And then another period during the period of 4th of March to the inauguration of the governors what movement, and then thereafter, what accounts have been put in place. So the work really is to make sure is we know where the monies were, where, how, what has happened in between, and make sure that the governor from uh, after inauguration is now accounting for it properly. In other words, make recommendation where it is not being done, that you make sure, Mr. Governor, when you send a check, make sure there is an in invoice make sure mr governor that the if means the integrated accounting system is being used make sure mr governor that every fortnight you call your accountant to give you a reconciliation <laughs> of things which have gone into the bank i mean these are basics so we are and more importantly let me say this we are also working very closely with the transition authority mm -hmm. on the asset side this one is bank account, but in the process we are also looking at what assets and liabilities should be there. Because we believe, at the, and the transition, I'm working very closely with them, to start going through Kenya where we should know when you take a county or a national government, where are their bank accounts, where are their assets, where are their liabilities, where are their people, where are their, do you understand? Because this is can be done, it is not a rocket science. So we are working with the transition authority eventually to institute this as a, a, an, uh, an integrated r assets register management. So what we are doing now is we are collecting that data from the counties. We, are, we have set up a team and I've contributed 30 of my staff <coughs> to help the transition authority mm -hmm. in a room whereby they are now just cataloging and warehousing all this because the next phase is now to go and verify mm -hmm. <laughs> that they actually are exist. So this is the second phase which will now work and this one will not be myself alone. It will involve even we will have to outsource and work with the wider accounting body in Kenya. Right. So uh, 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 can we confidently say that those who stole public resources <laughs> from the defunct <laughs> local authorities are in trouble? 
we would like, you see, this, this is the thing, we would like to do, this is why timeliness is important. <laughs> this is why I'm sending this team, so that within three months, we have a record, we have a report. And surely we hope that this record will show. It's, you know, some of the thefts in Kenya is because of disorganization. And if you do logical work, you should be able to see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we hope that this work will effectively make sure that we act in a timely manner to try and recover, not wait until two years. Mm -hmm. Then we find so and so has stolen and right. things are gone. Right. But, but the town clerks have already gone. If I was the town clerk in Nairobi City Council, yes, and I knew I'm going because I'm, I'm 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 going. Right. <laughs> so you, you allocate yourself. You, you pay. In fact, many of them are paying things that you pay. You just pay. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> by the time you come, you have already paid. I've gone. No, no, so no. You but you know, that? the year hasn't ended. <laughs> we'll still find you. Mm -hmm. We'll still find you. And most cases, the, the asset you bought fresh from this this money is always still be yeah. there. That's why timeliness mm -hmm. and, as I say, proactiveness is where to go. Okay. So perhaps just uh, very quick questions. Uh, last year you were calling for autonomy uh, from Treasury. You were basically saying how do you audit Treasury and still expect your budget mm -hmm. from them? How far has that gone? You know, the is issue of resources is very important because one, I the hallmark of independence also should be financial independence. Apart from the independence that you can issue a report, you can. I think this is something which we have to now work at because you know now we have a, r a different framework of budgeting. You know the budget is quite now more or less also in participation with the budget office of or, or of the parliament. Now uh, my resources are supposed to, I'm supposed to be given. This is what the constitution says: adequate resources to do my work. So logically, it would mean that it is the budget, co the parliamentarians to whom I'm responsible to, because it is to them I report to Wanjiko <coughs> through, yeah. because they are the representative of Wanjiko. Yeah. They should make sure for me to give assurance to Wanjiko that I have enough resources. And that means they sh I should be able to give them my work plan. I should be able to tell them what I'm planning to do. I should be able to tell them what this involves in terms of resources. We should be discussed with them. And then that money should be told to Treasury. Look, we've agreed this is our uh, constitutional responsibility towards this office. This is what. But uh, I also understand the Treasury side. You know, they also want to, you know, the cake is not <laughs> limitless. <laughs> yeah. They also want to be able to, to make sure that we don't just come up with outrageous figure and then ramp it through the process without also their participation. So I think I I despite all this, we also must work closely with Treasury in the process of, as I build my, uh, my, my budget, I'm, they, I'm in touch with them, I'm discussing with them, even though it will, Parliament is the final authority. But they are very much, uh, the only hope is that, uh, we hope that they also treat the office in the same spirit that the institution intended. Because under the current audit bill, once I've given my estimate to Treasury, it should be ring fenced. All right? Which means? Which means that it should not be interfered with. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, you know, this has not been the procedure. And we are fighting to make sure that this is the procedure. Mm -hmm. Now, previously, uh, the reports of the Auditor General, which go to the Public in Accounts Committee yes. and the Public Investment Committee, they're sometimes late. I don't know where, where, where you are up, up to now. Sometimes you find the, the accounts that are being discussed in Parliament are three years ago, which is now what we are calling uh, pathological. <laughs> exactly. Then which is, are, you, are you now up to date? You know, when I came uh, in the office in 2011, I was basically taking, uh, looking at accounts which was mm -hmm. the past year. So that accounts were, di were normally the in the past had been going in the May of the May June of the following year. Yeah. So last year's account, if you look at it, I brought it forward by one month. I signed the accounts on the mid mid April. For this year, I've already dispatched all the accounts to the ministries. All right. So the consolidation is now just an end, you know, just uh, by the way. 
So this is being done, it's been done, and it will go to the parliament. But you know, what has been, uh, we've been going through transition, and all this reporting has not fallen into place because of the transition. You know, the parliament has not been there. You know, we, they are now battling for the committees and also, as it is, things have been, but what I can assure you, we are trying to make sure that by next year, the financial year of the government is 30th June, that by end of December, as required by constitution, I should report back. Uh, you, do you understand of yeah. how this, but you know something which intrigues me and that I don't know why it has been, because Today we've set up the budget, we are doing the budget for the country. Yeah. And we are going to announce it to who? To Wanjiku next. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to tell Wanjiku what? Mm. This is how we are going to spend your money. Mm. Do you ever hear anybody go to the same platform and tell Wanjiku, ha this money which you are told, <laughs> how was it, this is how it was spent? True that. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. And this is the report, <coughs> my independent report on how it was spent. I think we need <coughs> to discuss with Parliament because this is a big communication omission. Because I think the first communication would be to go back with the same platform to table and read your report to Wanjiko. Yeah. When citizen mm. is there, when mm. mm. the yeah. is there, and, and yeah. they hear the same thing which they, they had. So that, I would say, that's the total accountability to Wanjiko. But mm. now what happens is, at the end, the tail end, we just do these reports and we grease it to PAC. PAC then, of course, with their child work program, sometimes discusses it almost six months later. So it's sometimes the reports are in time, but the processes of discussion are delayed. So it gives the impression that, you know, that uh, the reports came in time. How about so the audit of the corporation, state corporation and per status? Yes. How, how, how up to date is that? Because I remember at one time at the KUPTC, Yes, the, 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 the post office. Right. There was a special audit done on that corporation, and Tebo was in Parliament when Dollar was the the, the, the minister. Yeah, yes. He was the yeah. in charge yeah. of uh, public public accounts committee, and he yeah. never it was never Tebo. It stayed like that. You see, this there was a lot <laughs> of interference then. Yes. O what about now? What is it? Are we up to date in, uh, in, uh, in yeah. auditing state corporation? You know, the state corporations have got, uh, are uh, quite up to date. You know, they also have the State Corporation Act and the Inspector of State, uh, state Corporations yeah. who is continually looking at this. So the accounts have to be in place. The state corp I'm not worried about the state corporations because mm. they, they, they report quite independently. You know, some of them are also incorporated under the Companies Act, Act yeah. which requires certain statutory obligations on their part. So I, I'm not worried. And as you know, I've got, <laughs> it is increasing about 300 corporations which we'll be auditing in the coming year. So you ask me, can you actually do all this? Mm. You alone. Mm. No, one thing we should do is to recognize uh, how best I should use my resources. There are some areas whereby I can outsource yeah, to, so to, to, to third party or to the independent auditors or external auditors to audit on my behalf, but it is me who signs the report. Yeah. So we are uh, looking at this scenario, which I've told you that I really want to be given a, a total assurance. If I'm going to do all this, I must decide what should the priorities, what is important, and ask myself where at most is Wajiku's resources, resources are at risk. So we target those areas, you know, so work intelligently, try and get hit areas which we know the risks are high. So something like the state corporation, I'll increasingly outsource it because it is fairly straightforward. But I, I will follow up, but I want to do more on this managerial accountability issue whereby I'm timely, I'm doing work, which is relevant to the manager, the person who is managing, which is relevant, responding to Wanjiku's concern and respond to the, to the counties and uh, parliaments. And I believe that going forward, the work of the parliament, the National Assembly and the Senate, and the work of the county assembly will be, be will be informed and will be kept going because of the reports which I'll be giving quarterly, every so often on this. And you can imagine what how much work they should be having. You know, I believe that time is coming when if we do our work property, we, uh, properly, we have the resources. The country should be on its feet working on issues of accountability almost on a permanent 
basis at the national level and at the county assembly what level. What you are saying is the press can come to you and ask for reports mm. and oh, yeah, give yeah, them yeah. without any answer. Oh, no, no, no. Only no. the press have, has not come. Has not come. Has and not and come. also, I've also not told, uh, also not told the press that, mm. uh, listen, this, uh, I'm open. Mm. Yeah. I'm open for business mm. yeah. because it is your response. It okay. is your right. Okay. Right. Okay. Yes. I think that's the best news. Absolutely. So it's open. You can actually get information from the Auditor General. Talking to him, uh, the one and only Edward Ouko, the Auditor General. We'll be right back.